Hello everyone, welcome to SAP Technomaniac. In this video, we will learn about the concurrency control and e-take in OData. Let's get started. So first, we have to understand what is concurrency. Sometime, what happens, the multiple users want to update the same table, same fields or different fields on same data we can see. In that scenario, what happens if user one updates the data and after that user two updates the data and user once get back that data, he will not able to see whatever he's updated because user two, after his update, user two updated that particular data. So it will create a lot of confusion when we work real time. To avoid this confusions, we will use concurrency control. This concurrency control help us to manage this kind of scenario. So there are different concurrency control types are there. Pessimistic concurrency control is there. Optimistic concurrency control is there. Semi-optimistic concurrency control is there. So we'll see what is this one. So pessimistic concurrency control, we already aware. Why I'm telling or we already aware? We use in our app, core app, app we use. In this scenario, we will assume that whatever we are working with the data, that data or we are changing the data. Suppose we are changing one sales order data. We assume that when I am changing the data, somebody else also will change that data or multiple users can change that particular data. So what I do to avoid this kind of scenario, simply put when I read the data before that itself, I will put the log and I keep, I make sure until I will change and I will save that particular data, I will not release that particular log. That is called the pessimistic concurrency control. In this scenario, we just assume that there will be a lot of concurrent user will be there. They will be trying to change the data which I'm working on that I don't want to do. That is the reason I will put the post pessimistic, pessimistic logs on that. What is the disadvantage over there? There is the performance reduction. Why? Because I'm working on their data. I am taking too much time. And in between that time, some other user want to update some data in the, that particular sales order. He was not able to do due, due to that. I already, because I have already logged that particular data. So there will be obviously performance issue. And if it is some background jobs are running, they will also wait, wait for those checks or those uh, changes to complete by user one. Then only they can perform the particular changes. So the performance reduction will be happen. And about, apart from that, sometimes deadlock can occur. What is deadlock if you don't know? Sometimes, suppose user one want to update the two tables, table one, table A and table B. User two also want to update the two table, table A and table B. What user did, user one did, it, it logged table A and what user two is did, it logged table B. Now, user one want to log the table B and user one, Two want to log the table A, but table B is logged by user two and table A is logged by user one. That is the reason they will not, they are not able to lock those particular tables and they don't want to release the, the table which they have locked. So because they want to release all the data, they want to save table A and table B data together in the database. That is the reason they don't want to release. So in that case, that user one is waiting for user two and user two is waiting for the user one. I hope you understood uh, this kind of situation called the deadlock. So it will be infinite. They will wait this user background one in, in, in real time scenario, the two background jobs are running. The background one job is waiting for background two to complete job to complete to release that lock and background two job is waiting to release the background one job lock. So they will wait in finite time. So this is this kind of situation is called the deadlock. So this happen frequently when we are doing the using the pessimistic concurrency control. There is a second kind of concurrency control that is called the optimistic concurrency control. We are optimistic that the no other users or there is a very less chance of that the other user will update the same data which I am updating. The, so that is the reason what I will do. I will not put initially itself log. I will read the data. I will update the data. And when I want to really put the data, updated data in the database, that time only I will put the log. The log will be very for the very minimal time. 
so that is current that that is the con concurrency control is called the optimistic concurrency control semi optimistic concurrency control this is the mix up of the pessimistic and optimistic concurrency control or we can say blend of both in this what we will do we want to get the more performance or higher through output and we will we will not only use the pessimistic or opti uh, optimist pessimistic concurrency control we will use the optimistic concurrency control as well for the sum of the table we we use the pessimistic and for some tables we use optimistic concurrency control in the one program itself this is very specific use cases we use sometime if it is required now go in the system or before going to system we just want to get one example if i i will not use concurrency control what will happen what kind of issues can come this is the one of the table which we are using throughout uh, the so data series that is employee data in this employee data you can see i have one data where we are saving the employee data name city department start date end date salary currency and time stamp which i have added recently and the user one got this data and user to also read the same data both user read the read the same data now what they want to do user one want to update the department from sap technomaniac he want to give the department as a technomaniac and user two want to update the city name the C jaipur instead of jaipur he want to update the bangalore now both the got the same data they want to do their update but it is not possible they will do update together so suppose user one updated first he was able to successfully able to update the department name sap technomaniac to technomaniac you can see the latest data for the user one he successfully updated and you can see time stamp got changed that's very important he updated uh, previously it was 12 am he updated it 12 11 40 he updated and time stamp also got changed now user two want to update uh, user two also want to update he updated jaipur to bangalore and updated the data whatever the data he got he updated bangalore but but he didn't change the department but user two user one get back the data from the database when he saw the data he got the department name as a sap technomaniac but he have already updated the data as a technomaniac why he is getting sap technomaniac it is creating lot of confusion to the user one so this is the one of the real time example which can happen when we don't use the concurrency control but if we would have uses used that concurrency control what will happen so to using the concurrency control we have to use the e tech before going to that this is the one issue which is called the lost update what else can happen lost update means user one whatever he is updated he lost that data but second problem when the user two reads the data user one reads the data and update uh, before he is updating the data when user two reads the data he will not get the current data because user one will update the data when update the data that is called the dirty read because he got in between some data and he is modifying that data that is called the dirty read and not only that if user one is reading data user two is reading the data multiple time he read first time then read second time in the same program but the same data he is getting different differently because before he got some different data and same data he read again but he got second time different data so that is that can also happen and he might have assumed that we will get the same data but he is getting the different data because user some other user already updated the data in between so these kind of issues can happen to handle these kind of issues we will use concurrency control to achieve the concurrency control we will we use entity tag it's a very important thing is the entity tag so entity tags are the parts part of the http protocol means when we send any request through the http protocol we can send in a part of request header we can send the e tag as well and when we get the response from the through the http protocol as part of the response we will get in the response header this e tag value as well but how it will help whenever we are reading the data from the database not only we read the data we will read this e tag value as well and it take value as well that will be the specific to that current data 
when we read the data, this e take value, and now we want to update the same data. We have made the some changes. Now we want to update the data. Before updating the data, I will again read this particular entity take and I will compare both the entity take. If both the entity takes are same, I will update, no issue. But somebody else changed the data in the database and whenever he will change the data, he will update the entity take as well. Now if I will compare the entity take values, that will be not same. So data will be not same and we will get some error from the server. That, that 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 error will say somebody else got changed the data you are not working with the latest data you have to get the latest data and update again like that top this is the very critical rule will play played by the entity take most of the times entity takes are timestamps so one fields is there timestamps and whenever we change the data we will change that particular timestamp value and whenever we read the data as part of the entity take we will read that timestamp as well but for more complex scenario, we will use the hashtag values as well. Those hashtag value again generated that some hashtags for each data. That hashtag value will be the different for each data. If something got changed, the hashtag value also will get changed. That also we will see in the system. Suppose we would have used this control con concurrency control using the e tag. What would have happened? when user one and user two work with this kind of situation. So in the first case, whenever user one get the data, he got the data, this we already have seen. When he updated the data is the department to Technomaniac from SAP Technomaniac, he read this e-take time. He read the entity take. Currently this e-take I used as a time only, but it should be timestamp where the date and time both, both should be there. So whenever user one read the read it, read the data, that time he read that timestamp as well. Whenever he is updating the data along with the payload, he will send this e take value also to the server. What server will do before updating the data? He will check this e take value and the current value of the e take. So e take value. In this scenario, because user one is updating first time, he got the same, he will compare the e-take values, he will be able to update successfully and he will change, when he update the data in the database, he will change the timestamp when he changed actually. And we will get the, for the user one, we will get the response, you have successfully updated your data, we will be having the uh, 200, 0, 201 is the code and we will see it got successfully updated but the important thing when he update the data in the database, he will change the this e take value. But when user to update the data from Jaipur to Bangalore and he will put same request with the same e take value which he have read read in that case what happened he when server re, server will compare this particular e take value with the newer e take which is updated by user one that will not match now server we will server will give error to user one it got rejected this is called precondition failed precondition failed means you, whatever your data updated or whatever you are using the data that was not current data you have to get again the current data and update so this is the how concurrency control work and we will we will able to send uh, we will able to avoid this kind of scenarios where user one updated and he lost his uh, changes because of the user two now what user two will do instead of uh, doing this, this is in the same slide that was in different slide user one updated successfully he take but uh, when user two did he got the error. So in this scenario what user two will do user will two user two will get the latest data back again then he will update the data and based on the latest data he will see what is the latest data and based on that data he will update the data in the server. In that case we will not lose the data. In that case what will happen? So he will get this technomaniac as well and he will get the Jaipur city. Instead of getting the SAP technomaniac user to get now next time uh, he will get the technomaniac instead of getting the tech SAP technomaniac and he will not update the technomaniac back to the SAP technomaniac and he will successfully save the correct data once he will get the data. 
now there's too much about theory let's jump into the system we will see these all the things in the system as you already know my from my previous video we got the new sap system or we rented out new sap system uh, so we were not having in line in my last video we were not having g employee ram project what i did i was having already backup in the word file i created this g employee ram project inside that we have the entity type is the employee and this employee entity type is referred to z employee ram table and that also i have created but the only difference we have that we have added the timestamp field if you see the data in this employee ram table i have created some program to fill up this data as of now you can see the timestamp value is not correct but when we use this uh, table again and again that that will be corrected automatically so just to to explain this g employee ram project we don't have much we didn't do much thing so we have the properties employee id is a key field and other fields are the normal fields are we are having and you can see we added the one field in the timestamp table uh, in this table but that field is not reflecting here let me add this field also uh, here so you have to go in edit mode and you have to right click on this particular your entity type and import properties you have to write and you have to select the additional this option is available in the newer version only in older version you have to add the manually and you just click on next button and what all are the things code change you can see here and you can execute here once your timestamp field got added over here you can see it is converted to date time field and uh, they took all the data let me regenerate the my all the objects before doing that since we have the added this time stamp field we have to do some changes in our dpc extensions classes class as well if you see in dpc extension class of this particular project we have already code in place that is already all the code which we have learned about during our card operations you can see over here in the get entity set we are just getting the employee id and based on the key field we are getting the data and we are sending the data back to the user and in the get entity set method we are getting all the data simply and we are sending all the data from this z employee ram to the front end system the third system is the create entity here we have to make little bit changes over here uh, as you know from my previous video we are reading the data from the payload using the read entry data and once we read the data we are updating this inserting this data inside the g employee ram but one more thing we have to do over here the front end guy whichever he sent the data he will not send the time stamp we have to add this time stamp value over here the time stamp value uh, over here do we have time stamp field in the system control space i didn't change i don't think so we have some time stamp field in the system uh, we use that particular syntax is there get time stamp uh, field get uh, something is there yeah we have the help also and we will directly fill this get time stamp field inside this variable i think it should accept and what we will do once we will do the changes let me save it control s and uh, that's it and not only the creation time what we have to do the same thing we have to do the we have to change the uh, we have to add the time stamp during the updation time as well uh, we got the data here we added the client field here and we will update the time stamp as well set f1 let me activate the this particular dpc extension class this is the one thing since we have added this new field in the our project so we have to make sure that uh, timestamp field we have added uh, new field so it should be updated when we create the new entry or when we update the data in the database that time it should be updated automatically and we have re we have generated this runtime all the artifacts let me regenerate one more time it will be generated successfully once we click, click on the runtime generate all the runtime artifacts now our work will start basic thing we have done 
our project is created we have dpc class dpc extension class we have implemented all the get entity get entity set create entity update and delete entity all the method passive implementation we have done now our best etag related thing will start which we have to discuss so first thing what you have to do you have to go you have to go to your entity set and you have to give your etag field which field you want to use is the etag that's a very important before going that i just if you don't use as a etag field and you just test out the data just i want to test the data all the data what how it is going on let me open it out uh, our testing tool and let me open i have already open i think so okay so let let it be uh, what i can say what i can do i can add the entity set field and employee set add uri option i want to see in the form json format let me execute it once you execute you will get some internal error what is there in the context of data service is unknown to see this error let me go to the timestamp t code error log t code uh, what is this error okay timestamp value is invalid oh got it got it got it so we have a lot of values are there already so in this case there is uh, okay this values are invalid let me remove this value values to the sc16 t code uh, let me open sc16 and and maintain this some of the entries again i can't maintain here and uh, zm z employee ram not z media ram so let me copy the table name control c control v and let me execute it's maintainable so i can delete this one delete this delete or backspace and save it it got saved successfully let me close it out let me rerun the same query uh, now i suppose should not get this kind of issue again getting some issue let me check in error log refresh it out okay there is invalid value zero because it is null so let me go to the my project one more thing i can do in, instead of maintaining this all the entries here timestamp values what i can do i can make this property as a i think it should work if i do like this is a nullable timestamp value as a nullable, nullable and regenerate my runtime artifacts let's see how it goes now once it will regenerate i will go to again my t code and try to re-execute again again getting the same issue let me refresh it out refresh okay let me go again uh, remove the metadata if something clear case a and re-execute again yeah i think that was meta metadata issue so we got successfully yeah, at last so what i did uh, since this is the again real time scenarios when we have some de existing data and we will change the field data element or we will convert and we will rename that kind. So previously there was these values. It is creating some issue because this is not the valid value for the timestamp and it will it can't be converted into data element to the SAP data element to the EDM data element. So we have to remove this one. I have removed it through SA16 and, and second issue what we got uh, when these are the null Null values all the null values if i replace the data so you can see these all are the null values when we try to execute since this property was not nullable previously so that is the reason we were getting that issue so i made this property as a nullable now we are not getting this issue and we are able to get the uh, successfully data so timestamp is invalid value zero so i made is nullable now i am able to get the data let instead of getting this all the data let me get the employee id one which we have to work uh, do we have employee id one uh, in the data uh, i don't think so oh yeah we have one employee id let me get this employee id one mm, let me close close the unnecessary sessions so employee shade let me pass this as a one and get this data so get entity set working perfectly get entities also working perfectly you are getting the data correctly timestamp value also you are getting another data you are also getting two things we have tested now we will test the creation of new data 
post is working or not. So use as a request and we will, as you, this is the re recap, again recap of whatever we have learned. I don't need this metadata, let me remove this uh, metadata. Employee ID, we have to create new employee ID. I already have till nine, I will create as a 10. So let me go and create as a 10 employee ID and time stamp I will not give, no, not required to pass from here and other data it, it will be good. So because it will be runtime, it will be edit the timestamp name field, other, other thing is okay. Let me increase little bit and let me give my full name, Bangalore and I can put um, Marathali. So there will be some difference uh, and instead of SAP Technomaniac, that is fine. And let me change something, let me change, let me make it 30 and uh, let me make it USD. Okay, this is too much amount, but it is okay. Okay, let me use the post request and let me re-execute. I think this is not required now and we no need to pass the uh, key field as well. Just we have to pass the entity set name and payload post method and let me execute. Let me copy it out. If something goes wrong, control C, let me execute. It got successfully created in the system and you got the data. You can see timestamp automatically got updated. But there is no issue here. Okay, it's a normal run. So let me go and check the data is updated successfully or not. I can see the 10th entry got updated with Ram Nimas and uh, the Marathali Bangalore, SAP Technomania, that's other things are same. Okay, I changed the currency as well. So it's working perfectly. To check the last thing, update is working or not, what I will do, I, instead of using the post method, I will use the put method. And I saw somewhere Ram Nimas one, which I, let me change. Uh, let me change data. This one for fifth entry. Let me change. Okay, for changing fifth entry, what I will do? Let me pass as the fifth entry instead of Ram Nimas one. Let me give some other name. Some other name. Let me give uh, zone zone also there or not? I think so. It's not there. Let me give some other name. And this time I will give some other city, Delhi and Technomaniac instead of SAP Technomaniac, I can write Technomaniac and let it be other fields, let it be SAP. This time we use put request and whenever we are using put request, uh, you have to pass the payload and you have to pass, I think the, your which entity set you are changing and put method payload and let me execute it got successfully updated let me see it got updated or not just you have to replace refresh the data for this line item refresh it it got up updated you can see fifth zone delhi and name i can sort it by, by id also you can see it got updated okay update also working create also working delete also working now our e take that this is existing project which i have shown you now we have to see the e-take how it will work. So first step whenever we are working with, so what we have to do, we have to make our, this particular time stamped field is a entity take field. To do that, you have to go to your entity type and inside the entity type, you see your entity type is employee and which is referred to G employee RAM and there is some column is there e-take. So it is saying, you have to define here your e-take field if you want to use e-take. So I have to do F4 here, it will give me help and I have to use the time stamp field as a e-take e -take field. That is very important. And let me regenerate my all the runtime artifacts after doing and there will be some changes in the DPC extension classes, uh, not DPC and extensions. There will be some change happen in MPC, X, MPC class. If you go and see the MPC class, uh, with this particular timestamp field, you can see this is a e-take field. The state is e-take. This property is a automatically set as a e-take. This is again framework generated code. But sometimes we were not able to do through the framework. We have to write the code in the MPC extension class. That also I will show you when we work with the with reference to CDS. We will create the OData service. As of now, we are more on the framework how it is working. So no need to worry about the things. So it it as soon as you make this field as a e take, everything will be taken care. So what I will do now, I will go to my code. Uh, let me 
change again this fifth uh, instead of uh, let's uh, give some other name instead of john let me give rasmi or something some other name i can give and uh, delhi i can change noida as well i can delhi noida i will write or new delhi i can write and some changes i want to do and i want to use the update method again here the one thing you will see as, you, as soon as you do the okay currently it got updated successfully I think I regenerated runtime artifact or not. Let me regenerate one more time. After the e take value, I it got regenerated, but I think so metadata. Let me do the cleanup cache and let me execute again. This is the error. The whenever you are executing and you are feeling something wrong, you have to go to the your metadata and you have to clean your cache. So it will not get the same data again. So you can see I'm getting the error here. So this error, what this error is saying, the data service is required to be conditional. Try using if match header. So the problem is that with this one, since we made this particular entity set as a, we have one of the field as a e take field. We have to pass this e take field every time whenever we are pre updating the data in the system. So since I'm updating, I'm using the put request. I use the employee set five. I want to make some changes in employee set five. This is giving the error. You have to pass if match header. But what value I have to pass in the if match header that you have to see. So for doing that, first I will do the get method. I will use the add URI options. I will use format equal to session and I will try to get the data again from the system. Once you see the data, there is one more important thing is there in the header. You can see the one timestamp also there. This is not in header. It is in the data. You can see the timestamp is there and other, along with the other data. But if you increase little bit over here, this uh, one e take field will be there in your header response. As I told you in the header request and header response, you will get this e take field that you can fill out when we initially discuss the e take. So what we have to do, so we got the data. Now we along with the data, we got the e-take as well. So with the current data, what is the e-take? Whatever the e-take we have, we got that data. Now, whenever I will update the data in system, I will use this e-take. If I will not use this e-take value, or so, then I will get obviously error. You have to pass the e-take value, then only you, like we got just now. So I, what I have to do, I have to copy this e-take value, control C, and I have to put again put request for the put request. I don't no need to pass format equal to JSON. And I, I have to use I have to give one additional header parameter that is if match. You can pass a small any character. It should be if match should be returned, and you have to pass the, your e take value. That is very important. And with this e take, I want to update. If you don't pass control X, if you don't pass the e take value. If you don't pass the e take value and you just try to execute first time i have to use as a request let me remove this junk data let me change something rasmi already got changes uh, because that time metadata was not uploaded uploaded successfully let me pass something rasmi one and let me try to update again execute but this time i got the error that you have to pass the if match value so if match value that will be nothing we have to pass one additional field uh, if match and we have to pass inside this control v this e take value whatever we got i think so it should be similar because we got uh, just now this particular field and the e take value whatever we are getting this we will be getting from this particular field uh, in the data if you refresh the data g employee ram you can see the for the fifth line item we have already updated the timestamp so that same timestamp value we will be getting over here 2023 03 18 12 59 38 so same value we will be getting so let me try out now i pass the e uh, the system asks for the e take value let me execute now it got successfully updated what i updated rasmi one so let me see if data it got updated or not control check it got updated or not uh, i have to refresh the data instead of rasmi it should be rasmi one so let me refresh the data. You can see Rasmi1 got updated. If I don't pass e take now, 
then I will get the error. This is the first important thing. As soon as you make in your Odita project one e tag, one property is an e tag, you have to pass the e tag value whenever you are doing the put operation. That's a very important thing. So, what we will do now, we will update the uh, whatever we saw in the theory part, we will try to replicate here as well. So, we have this entry 800 RAM Jaipur SAP Technomaniac. User 1, one want to change SAP Technomaniac to Technomaniac and user 2 want to change Jaipur to Bangalore. So, same thing we will do. We have the same entry, first entry RAM Jaipur SAP Technomaniac. User 1 want to change SAP Technomaniac to Technomaniac and user 2 want to change Jaipur to Bangalore. So, let's get started. So, I already opened one session uh, where you can see this one, this data is already there. Let me open one another session from here. I can open from here SAP Gateway Client, I can click and it will open another session. This is user one session and where I am getting the data from for the first employee, you can see I got the data. I will do the same for user two as well, control V and let me execute. I got the data for the user two as well. And for both the user, for first user what I will do, use as a request and if you see that timestamp value we have to take, control Y, control C and you, you can store user one value. I already stored some other, other value and user two also will be having same, same value only. I will show you that also. So you can see user one value and user two value also if you want to see, you can have to come little bit down and you have to take the e take value, control Y, control C, I'll take and you can update user two value, control V. Both are same because uh, timestamp didn't get first time when we read. Now, this is the user one, this is user two. I will go for the user one first. I want to update some data. Obviously, I will update little bit metadata over here. And what user one want to do, he want to remove the SAP in front of Technomaniac and he want to update Technomaniac. Obviously, let me remove this one. I will show you what it is. Uh, we want to do some put request and we have to add a file, not file, sorry we have to add a request if match header in the header line we have to add if match and we have to pass the timeline value once we did we have the payload we will remove this format equal to json we don't need the id as well we pass no we need the id in the update employee id and i want to change from techno uh, let me refresh the data and see what is the current data it is current data SAP Technomaniac. First user want to change the Technomaniac. Let's let it execute and see. He is able to execute successfully. Let me rephrase the data. You see this one will get changed. You can see Technomaniac got changed. Now user to what he want to do? He want to do the same request, uses a request and he want to pass the same data uh, if match. And this time he will use the same e -tag because he is having this e -tag only. Both are same. So I'm using the same e -tag value. And we will do the put request, we will remove the format equal to JSON in front of them and we want to do the for but, but this time he want to change Zepu to Bangalore. As you can see Zepu to Bangalore. So we have to change Zepu to Bangalore. One more thing is there, he don't know somebody changed SAP Technomaniac to Technomaniac but still he tried to put this request and let's execute this one. He got the error, precondition failed. Why we got the error? Because the e take what we are sending from here, it got mismatched because currently what is the e take value? If you request again uh, the same data, get get request if you do entity set, add URI options, and if you go in the format equal to JSON, I want to get the first record, not first record, and if you execute this one. One second, there is something issue. Okay, we have to remove this if match one. It should not be there. Let me execute again. And you can see the e take value is changed. Control Y, Control C. And what is the new e take value which you got from the user one when it got changed? This is the new e take value which is not matching with this one. User two try to update with this e take value, it will not work. So, what user two you have to do? There is two options. User two either will get again data and update, he want to override the user one changes. The, whenever the theory guy develop the application, he want to give one option. You want to override the changes or you want to go with, you want to get the new changes and then you want to update. Sometime user will click on the override. 
in that case uh, instead of sending this if match if we send if none match none match that will update in the database or one more thing we can do we can change the if match value you instead of passing the if match this particular timestamp whatever the timestamp is there don't worry about that and just go and update if you execute with this one if match equal to star this is wildcard value and if you try to up update again bangalore and you execute this one it will successfully update it and you can see if you refresh the data it got all right and with the bangalore but this time the because we have changed the technomaniac also but when we got initially data was it was the and sap was there so somehow it got changed in between so it was sap technomaniac and bangalore was there and if you again re-execute again this time again it will this will be like this you over return the user one changes but ideally we should not override the user one changes and if user want to do if you want to give the option that option we can give at the front end side and you can pass if match equal to star and apart from that if match equal to star one more thing we can do if you delete this one and we ha we have one something called if none match that if none match match and we are using still older one control copy control v and we want to still want to update something suppose i want to update ram to ram Nivas. i have updated this one if i execute again even the latest uh, timestamp is not matching with this one and we are trying to execute it will go and update because we use if none match and whatever the if it is not matching also you will go and update if you see now and see the values, what is the values? It got changed successfully here, Ram to Ram Nivas. Now we will see, you know, each time it is comparing the e take whenever we are updating the data. But how the system is getting the e older e take value? To see that, we have to go to the, our DPC extension class and we have to put some breakpoints. Uh, the one of the mandatory thing whenever using the e take your using the framework your get entity method should be implemented you have to put the method black point on the get entity method not only in the get entity we will put the uh, black point in update entity method as well so these are the both uh, methods are there which, which is important for us which will trigger let me do control f3 i think i didn't change anything no need to worry just i put the black point what i will do i will try to trigger again the First, uh, I will get the data uh, is simply from this particular request employee one set data. If you execute the break point will trigger. Let me switch to debugger perspective. And if you see the employee ID, we got one and we are getting the just data uh, in the ER entity and we are just sending the data, whatever we got. There is no problem in this. Let me do F8. It is working perfectly. So if you see the data, data we face the successfully. But I want to change the data now. I have to use put request. And one more thing, uh, one of the comment, uh, uh, one of the comment I got, you never saw this page in much. This also I will try to show you today, which method it is triggering. Basically, it trigger the update method only. First, we will use the put request. And let me comment, that, delete this one. And what we will do, use the request. We will copy this timestamp, control C, and we will put in the plus data if match, and we will pass this value here, control V. We didn't do any implementation to work e take, it is automatically working because it is handled by framework. But there is one disadvantage over there that also I will show you. Let me remove this metadata, I don't need this metadata as of now. And I just want to change again Ram to Ram Nivas. And let me re execute again. Post. I don't want to pass this one. I just want to pass the employee set one. I have the URI. Let me execute again. Ideally, which method it should trigger? Update entity method it should trigger. But if you go and see, first it is triggering the get entity set method, get entity method. In the get entity method, it will it will get the older time stamp. Once it get the older time stamp, it compare and that both the timestamp are matching i am doing the affect again then only it will call the update ent entity method otherwise in between it will stop and it will give error f6 and this time i got latest timestamp and with latest timestamp i updated the this data latest data 
let me go to here you can see successfully got updated let me retry again one more time to update bake with ram i didn't change the timestamp value this time i'm using a still older timestamp and i'm trying to execute again then if you see again first it got the get entity method but this time if you see if i do f8 here it will not trigger the update entity method because when it go it, it got from get entity timestamp value and it compared the timestamp value for, with this this timestamp value both are not matching so that is the reason we are getting the precondition failed error so it is telling whatever the timestamp you are using it is not matching you have to use another timestamp to overcome this and we we want to override right still you can use if none match or you can use here star is a wild card value for the your entity set uh, for your timestamp value and you can update in the database this i want to show you because uh, i didn't show you in the debug mode what it is happening it behind that is very important one of the prerequisite very important we have to implement get entity method if you want your framework should call first get entity method then get update entity method whatever we did today it is framework specific we didn't write single line code so entity code uh, to uh, compare the entity our uh, what we can say compare the e takes and uh, timestamp we didn't write single line code we just made one property as a timestamp and that we made as a uh, e take as soon as we make is the e take and if you have get entity method is implemented and update entity method is there it will work automatically no need to do in my upcoming videos i will show you how to do the this particular uh, without framework how we can do this uh, entity tech things we have to do some implementation for that so this video is becoming longer i'm pretty sure this video would have added some value to your knowledge if you learn something new from this video please write it down in comment section please do share this videos with others as well with that thank you and happy learning